abducens are the sixth cranial nerve. Introduction. The abducens nerve is the sixth cranial nerve. It has a long course in the subarachnoid space. Nucleus. The nerve gets origin from abducens nucleus, which is located in the lower part of the pons, deep to the facial colliculus in the floor of the fourth ventricle. The nerve cell bodies in abducens nucleus are of two types. The large sized typical motor neurons supply the lateral rectus muscle. The small sized interneurons whose axons ascend in contralateral medial longitudinal fasciculus and end in the oculomotor nucleus, the part which supplies the medial rectus of the contralateral side. These connections ensure coordinated conjugate movements of the right and left eyes. Course and distribution. Interneural course. The axons of the absent nucleus travel anteriorly through tegmentum in the basilar part of the pons close to the midline and emerges from the pontomedullary junction above the pyramid. Intracranial course. The abducens nerve pierces meninges that lie lateral to dorsum cellae and crosses the apex of the petrous part of the temporal bone in a fibrooseous canal. It then enters the cavernous sinus from its posterior aspect. In the sinus, it is lateral to the internal carotid artery and medial to the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Sympathetic fibers travel with the sixth nerve in the cavernous sinus before continuing with the superior division of the fifth or trigeminal nerve. In the cavernous sinus, the abducens nerve is vulnerable to compression in conditions due to increased intracranial pressure. It exits the cranium through the middle part of the superior orbital fissure enclosed in common tendinous ring. Intraorbital course. In the orbit, the abducens nerve travels forwards and laterally to supply the lateral rectus muscle. Functional components. General somatic efferent fibers originate from abducens nucleus to supply the lateral rectus muscle. Therefore, the nerve's primary function is to abduct or move the eye towards the temporal field in the horizontal plane. However, the sixth cranial nerve also facilitates a phenomenon known as conjugate eye movements. This process ensures that both eyes move in the same direction on the horizontal plane. Note that the lateral rectus of the left eye would turn the eye to the left while the same muscle of the right eye would shift that eye to the right. Therefore, in the absence of conjugate gaze, the eyes would diverge and the ability to focus on an image would be challenging. Therefore, the sixth cranial nerve not only supplies the ipsilateral lateral rectus muscle, but also influences the contralateral medial rectus muscle. This is made possible by the internuclear neurons found in the sixth cranial nerve nucleus. They form synapses between the motor neurons of the sixth nerve nucleus with the fibers of the medial longitudinal fasciculus. The medial longitudinal fasciculus then synapses with the oculomotor nerve nucleus, which innervates the medial rectus muscle. Clinical insight. Unilateral lesion of the abducens nerve is common due to increased intracranial pressures. This results in paralysis of lateral rectus, which is characterized by medial squint due to unopposed action of the medial rectus muscle. The most common causes in children are tumors, trauma, increased intracranial pressure, and congenital causes. Horizontal diplopia when patients attempt to look towards the paralyzed side can be appreciated. Lesions of the MLF causes medial rectus weakness. Most isolated sixth nerve palsies will recover spontaneously. Treatment modalities for those with persistent disability may include patching, prism therapy, strabismus surgery, and botulinum toxin. The goal is to maximize visual function, including the alignment of the eyes.